Great matchup right here. These two teams played earlier just about a month ago, and Bruce City came out victorious. Chicago outfit, a lot of penalty trouble in that game, just like they had yesterday. They seem to have cleaned it up a little bit today. Nice victory over Madison. So this one will be the play-in for the four, or fifth place game. Yes, and the Bruce City Bruisers this season went four and six uh, in WFTDA sanctioned play in the region. They went two and four. The Chicago Outfit, eight and five in WFTDA sanctioned play. In the region, they went six and three, though. Uh, a strong showing there, and they, they've had a great tournament so far. They, they're they're going to wind up placing higher than they came into it, and they've got to be thrilled about that. Absolutely. You see Bruce City out there getting their final warm-ups in. This would be a great time to introduce some of these skaters to you. If you're if you're just joining us, the Bruce City Bruisers are going to be in the black jerseys doing their warm-ups now. Number zero, Bloody Cupcake. Number zero, two, Servant Justice. Number one, KCC Scooter. Number 14, Stryker. Number 216, Frank Herter. Number 22, Latina Heat. Number 24, Carrie A. Hacksaw. Number 30, Romaniac. Number 31, M. Fatal. Number 425, High D Voltage. Number 68, Moby Nips. Number 716, Zote. And number 78, Rejected Soul. That's right. 425, Betty Clobber out there along with High D Voltage, number 60. Oh, excuse me. I got a typo here. Thank you. And uh, for the Chicago Outfit Syndicate, they're going to be fielding number zero, num or 0902, Hiroshima. 1031 Molly Hatchet, 110 Smashly the Spaniard Destructo, 1134 Bloody L, 138 Lola Blow, 14 Joan Ranger, number 22 Margles McNasty, number 24 Queefer Sutherland, number 32 Payne Gwen, 422 Gagan, triple six Susie Crotrot, 86 Hells Awaitin', AK 47 Lady K, and M80 the Captain, Sweet Mary Payne. You know, Sweet Mary Payne, 34 point jam earlier today against Madison to blow it open and let the Chicago Outfit Syndicate progress into this game. Yeah, that was incredible. That was a great jam to watch as uh, Chicago came from behind, got a commanding lead and kept it that way for the remainder of the bout. You can see the Chicago fans there very fired up. They, they've been uh, very energetic and very loud. They're making their presence known here in Indianapolis. Sending the uh, magic from the stands see all the skaters not playing in this bout, and uh, as well as some uh, home team skaters from back home, friends and family out there. One of the nice things about a tournament like this is, you know, with, with everybody in the region, it's a little bit easier for the fans and the skaters from the home teams or the B teams or the skaters who aren't playing in the tournament to come out and help support. That's right. Got a lot of love from the B teams this weekend. Favorite sign so far, the Thunderdogs sign. <laughs> Chicago style hot dogs. Chicago is going to be in the white jerseys. They're a, a team of many colors this weekend. We've seen them skate in black, yellow, and now white. That's right. They were slated to wear the yellow, but they are going to opt to wear the white. Uncommon for them. Usually you see them in either the black or the yellow. First time I've seen them come out in the white. Having the pleasure of calling for them at home over the last couple seasons. I've seen a lot of Chicago outfit. They've been an up-and-coming team for a long time. It took them a while to get into the WFTDA. But once they made it in last June, they made a very strong statement at the end of the season. Could not be at the regional playoffs in 2010. And very happy to be here as the number nine seed. You in know, 2011. Chicago kind of reminds me, we've seen a, almost a common thread in some of these playoffs this year in the WFTDA Big Five. We've seen uh, London was kind of the unexpected, this underdog that came in and finished fifth. Uh, they came in tenth. A lot of people felt like that they shouldn't be in there, and they proved their critics wrong resoundingly, finishing fifth place. And then uh, in, in the South Central region, we saw uh, teams like Green Country that – first time in the in the tournament do very well and uh, this could be uh, Chicago the the version that we're seeing here 
in, in the North Central playoffs here at Mont Monumental Mayhem. That's right, and they would love nothing more than that. You know, talk to a couple outfit skaters after that first game when they lost to Arch Rival by just a handful of points for the opportunity to play Windy City, and uh, they will, pardon me, they will be very happy if they can come in and come out with a fifth place finish. Obviously, finishing anywhere higher than they came in would be a big step. Same thing with Brew City coming in a little bit lower, but wanting to make a statement here and move on up into that fifth place spot. That's right, both teams have a lot to gain here, and uh, it's been a great weekend for both of these teams. I think we're gonna see some incredible roller derby. You are correct, Mellow Joe. And of course, the winner will go on to face for the fifth place slot, arch rival and Cincinnati's victor. And the loser will go on into the loser's bracket and play tomorrow morning. All right, we're gonna start things out right. A couple heavy hitters on the jammer line. Sweet Mary Payne out there for the Chicago Outfit Syndicate at number 24, Carrie A. Hacksaw big part of this team especially yesterday she did a great job up against Detroit trying to hold them back Sweet Mary Payne some incredible jamming earlier today you have to wonder uh, if the teams are feeling a little fatigued Sweet Mary Payne not easily fatigued great start right here I think she just got her feet under her this morning tiptoes on through the inside line the Chicago outfit doing the quick start because they want their jammer to get out there and start scoring because one of the best at doing that is Sweet Mary Payne. That's right, and, and you know, they could get that mental advantage just by getting the lead, especially if they can get an early head start in that, that score. That's right, right back there you saw Sweet Mary Payne play a little defense, threw a hit on the opposing jammer, and right there she gets taken out down to a knee and she'll call it off as she slides into the turn. Five points, that's a grand slam for Sweet Mary Payne and Chicago Outfit starting out with a five nothing jam, drawing first blood. Scooter now on the line for the Brew City Bruisers. And that's gonna be Just Jan on her jersey. Number 24, Queen for Sutherland. Skating is Just Jan today. Another quick start for the Jammers, and here they come. Scooter with the jump off the Jammer line in there fighting hard up against Susie Crotrot and Gagan. Scooter being sent to the box right now, major penalty, and that is exactly not what Bruce City wanted to see. Minor, uh, no pass, no penalty on the outside there, so no lead Jammer for just Jane, as she's gonna get out of the pack, and we will have a two minute jam. Neither jammer eligible at this point to get lead. Just Jan, just incredible. Nice speed on the outside, but gets bumped out. Great defensive play right there from Romaniak. Lady K with the retaliation offensive block on Romaniak, number 30, wearing the pivot stripe in the black and gold for Bruce City. I believe Scooter went to the penalty box for a forearm. She's still got some time remaining as this power jam continues for Chicago. Romaniak right there again. Oh, big hit coming in. Nice job right there from the outfit to try and clear that out. And out in front as the pack is getting spread out. Just Jane taken down. Sutherland recovering nicely, taking her time, being patient right now. And Bruce City Bruiser is doing a great job killing this penalty as Servant Justice throws a hit into number 24. She gets hit again out in front by Romaniak, and Romaniak has essentially killed most of this power jam herself. And there we see Scooter back in play, trying to work her way up front. Bruce City doing an excellent job of trying to neutralize the power jam. They did so successfully, but here we go. Outfit out of the pack on the scoring pass, and five points were scored, so five nothing on that pass in favor of just Jane Sutherland. Jam will be called before they can get back into scoring position. So a 5-0 jam on the second one. We see Scooter heading back to the bench right there. Early penalty trouble. She, you can see the disappointment on her face. She's got to shake that off though. It's a long game and there's a whole lot of derby left to play here in this play-in game for a shot at the fifth place bout. It's gonna be Zote, 716 with the sparkly 
Derby skins on her booty, wearing black and gold for the Bruce City Bruisers and out in front of her. <laughs> Blizzo on her jersey, Lola Blow number 138 for the Chicago outfit. Lola Blow knocked to the outside, great defense right there, Bruce City. Very fine job trying to work Zote up to the front, but a nice knockout drag back right there for Molly Hatchett. Zote working her way up to the front, and she slides in around. Great job staying on one foot on the inside, but here comes Lola Blow right behind her. Match race on the floor right now. Two speedy jammers for their respective teams. Zote with the lead on the floor and the finger of power making her lead jammer. She's coming into the pack, but there was a bunch of black in the back, so she'll call it off because she wasn't sure if Lola Blow would score before she did. Joe. Yeah, that was an incredible jam. Uh, the Bruce City Bruisers able to keep the pressure on not able to crack the goose egg yet. Looks like they're going to field Carrier Hacksaw to try and break the goose egg. Meanwhile, Sweet Mary Payne on the line for the Chicago outfit. Chicago taking a knee. Chicago nope. liking that quick start out there. Four on four in the pack. In jam three, Sweet Mary Payne, nice move to the inside. Katja not looking. And she is out with Lee Jammer for the Chicago outfit. Sweet Mary Payne really making her name known and her presence felt at, at this playoff this weekend. That's right. Lady with a name already, Carrie A. Hacksaw, trying to work her way in front around Lady K. Gets up to Smashly Destructo and gets hemmed in. Sweet Mary Payne now engaging the pack. Wall of black in the back for the Bruce City Bruisers. Outfit doing their best to try and chip that apart right now as they have a two wall of Smashly Destructo and Marbles McNasty up front. Sweet Mary Payne moved to the inside, out on the scoring pass, and that is a grand slam. Beautiful. They left an opening on the inside of the, the last turn. She was able to skate right through it. Carry a hacksaw, having a hard time making her way through the pack here. Hacksaw, very effective jammer for Bruce City all season and early in this tournament. Right there, nice effort from the outfit blockers. Great recycling, and basically they're doing at least at least a one player attacking carry a hacksaw at all times. And a grand slam pass for Sweet Mary Payne out there, who is just nicely pacing herself around the pack and allowing her team to do most of the work. See Lady K out there, nice force out with the hip. Up against Carrie Hacksaw and Sweet Mary Payne up against Hacksaw. Fights it out, gets low, gets out front, and another grand slam for Sweet Mary Payne. Racking them up three so far in this jam. About 10 seconds left in this jam. See if she can get any more points for her team right now. Carrie Hacksaw hanging back, and Sweet Mary Payne will get around her. She'll get at least a jammer lap point. Picks up another one right there, dodges around number zero and picks up another point on Bloody Cupcake. Three points on that pass, 20, er, 28 points now in favor of Chicago Outfit to zero, 18 point jam for Sweet Mary Payne. Just an incredible display of athleticism here. Speaking of athletes, the athletes you're seeing here, they're using Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA, and you're gonna find those wheels on Rydell Skates, the proud partner and official skate of the WFTDA. Thanks to all our supporting sponsors here. Scooter on the line for the Bruce City Bruisers. And she's up against Just Jane Queefer Sutherland. Sutherland out to the front, but great job right there by Scooter. Works her way up front and out with Lee Jammer. And now out, or the Chicago outfit having to deal with a very defensive-minded squad from Bruce City. They want to get on the board and they want to stop this momentum. Oh, nice hit right there. Attempted, but she got thrown off balance. Ran right into Scooter. Scooter stays up. Great maneuver on the inside right there to the outside. Gets out, and that's a grand slam for Bruce City. Bruce City finally on the board with five points. Another dime in the bank. First dime in the bank for the Bruisers. Both jammers now trying to make their way through the pack. And Queefer Sutherland having a hard time, still not out on her initial pass, bumped to the inside, coming back in behind Scooter. 
Scooter, very solid jam. And that was important for her to come in and have this jam after she went to the box early in the game. Chicago with some effective recycling on Scooter there. One down to the floor, but Outfit doing their best to hold her back. Scooter with a little bit of room gets through. Kick step on over a down skater, and she is out another grand slam. 10 points on the board for the Bruce City Bruisers after a 28-0 run. The Bruisers have struck back. You know, all it could take is a power jam for the Bruce City Bruisers to come back and even take the lead. It's way too early to count anyone out of this one. 20 minutes still remain in the first period. And then we've got 30 more minutes after that, so it could go either way. Lola Blow on the line for the Syndicate. She's up against Zote for the Bruisers. See Zote with that far back start trying to get a little bit of speed before she hits the pack. But Lola, Lola Blow. Blow, wow. Lola Blow on the outside of turn three makes her way through the pack. She's the lead jammer. She's gonna try and capitalize on this burst of speed. Nice athletic blocking there from Gagan, doing her best to hold back Zote. Lola Blow hitting the pack, pack hits back. She gets up and she's gonna tap the hips before Zote can get back around and score any points. It'll be a one nothing jam in favor of Bruce City. Nice last second effort from Zote to get in there and pick up that point. That's very nice, yeah. If you're a new fan, it's the fourth whistle is what signifies the end of a jam. And if, if the jammers hips past the opponent's hips, that's a point. So, and that's what we saw there. Just barely got in before that last whistle. That's why timing the call offs is so important. All right, Sweet Mary Payne out there for the Chicago outfit. And that's number 60, high D voltage with the star first time in this game for Bruce City. Oh, big pile up. Susie Crotrot slammed to the ground and she's gonna get a major low block because her falling body took out the legs of that Bruce City jammer. Meanwhile, Voltage trying to make her way through the pack. She's got one more skater to pass. Not an easy one to get around. Molly Hatchet right there, tough defense, but she does get around and no, a major cut. She got around, but she stepped out of bounds. A great job by Molly Hatchet, drawing the major penalty. And we're gonna play some jammer pinball. Johnny, get your quarters out, because here we go. <laughs> All right, she's gonna head into the box. Heidi Voltage will sit, and that will release the jammer for the Chicago outfit. Sweet Mary Payne back onto the track now to put some points up on the board for the Syndicate. Making her way up the outside of the back straight away. Now to the inside. Getting hemmed in right there, big knockdown. Nice offensive clearing block for the outfit. Sweet Mary Payne getting down around to the outside, gets up to the front, gets a little bit of a hip check right there from Bloody Cupcake and keeps on rolling. She is out, that's her initial pass, so no points on that one. But big, big momentum factor right there. Here we go, Heidi Voltage out, and I believe that was a scoring pass. No, that's right, she stepped out right before she finished her initial pass. So no lead jammer on this one. This one's gonna go the last 21, 22, 20, 20, 19 seconds. Usually those go in order, but Sweet Mary Payne with four <laughs> points right there. That's the only number that really matters is the score, at least until we get into the uh, you know time situation. But Heidi Voltage, number 60, working her way around. Five more seconds to pick up some more points. Let's see if she can do it. Looks like she's got at least one there. Puts in some hustle and a major back block right at the end right there, it looks like. So Heidi Volt, fourth minor, excuse me, fourth minor for Heidi Voltage. So she is going back to the box, second trip in that jam for Bruce City's jammer. Wow. Gotta stay in the game. Those penalties are gonna cost a lot later. The second period could be very, very close. It's just too early for this many penalties. That's right, and that's one thing you gotta worry about in roller derby games is penalties because a major will have major impact right then because you're gonna lose that skater, but minors will accumulate and they'll sneak up on you. Okay, power jam right now for Weaver Sutherland, number 24, getting in there. A nice wall up front by Bruce City and she gets knocked to the inside. Oh, the skater who took her out goes down. She goes down as well, and she can't come in cleanly. That's a no pass, no penalty, so she will not be lead jammer right there. Still an opportunity for Bruce City if they can get their jammer out of the box in time. But right now it looks like there's enough time 
four. Queen for Sutherland to do some damage right here before Heidi Voltage is released from the box. Sutherland now trying to work her way through the middle of two very astute blockers. That's right. A very tough blocker to get around is Servant Justice getting some help out there from one of her teammates, Frank Herter. But that's going to be five more points on the board for the Chicago outfit. Just Jane Sutherland. Oh, offensive block going to draw a major right there. Lady K going clockwise. And she will be sent to the box for Chicago outfit. Heidi Vold is quickly out. Lead jammer and she'll call it off. Stop the bleeding right there. But three more points will go on the board for the Chicago outfit. That will push them up to 41. Bruce City Bruisers, 11 points. About 15 minutes and 30 seconds left in this first half. We'd like to thank Derby Skins. Derby Skins loves making your shiny, your hiney shiny. Also, we'd like to thank Papa Roo. Some excellent food being served up here in Indianapolis when, where you'll get hit in the mouth with a little bit of South, Papa Roo. This jam is underway. And the Brew City Bruisers Sending out Zote right there. Great speed from number 716. Picking up lead jammer for her squad right there. That's what they needed right now. Lola Blow with only two blockers on her side in the pack. Four blockers out there for the Bruce City Bruisers. Lola Blow going to fight through. On an edge. Gets edged out again. Nice blocking up front from Bruce City. And a five-point grand slam will go to Zote as she laps it around Lola Blow. Zote says, okay, let's pick up some points here. Sarait Zote. <laughs> Date myself a little bit with that one, but three more <laughs> points go up on the board for the Bruce City Bruisers on that pass. So an eight-point jam right there. Trying to, you know, minimize the distance between these two teams. Again, only one quarter into this game, and it's 41-19 in favor of the Chicago Outfit. Of course, Outfit wearing the white with black and little accoutrements. And uh, right there, wow. the accoutrements must be what's slowing down all other players, but not Sweet Mary Payne. Bare bones, awesome derby right there from number M80 in the Chicago outfit. Just quickly made her way through the inside of the front straightaway before they were even in turn one. She was already through the pack. Just incredible athleticism here from Sweet Mary Payne. That's right, and one thing you could say about Sweet Mary Payne is that she is a great athlete, but she is also an incredibly smart derby player. Picks up one point right there, no points for Bruce City, and the little wins are still wins. And I tell you what, that she's one of those skaters that you will encounter after a game, and you know a lot of skaters just want to shake it off and go have fun, but she will sit there and she will analyze derby all night long because she just wants to get better, whether it's physically or mentally, and she wants her team to succeed. And it shows on the track. She's doing an excellent job today. Scooter now on the line for the Bruce City Bruisers. Just Jan for the Chicago outfit. Nice speed around the outside. Got a little bit of, oh, and a major low block is going to go. She basically just took her, it looked like a soccer slide tackle right there. And lead jammer as Kuifer Sutherland regains her composure and her feet. Very quick feet around the track right there as the Chicago outfit trying to maintain that wall of white up front and hold back Scooter. Just an immense amount of speed now as she's coming up in turn three, but she's going to the penalty box. Wow, not what they needed. That bad break right there. Queen for Sutherland knew she made that penalty, but you know a lot of credit has to go to her team right now, especially Gagan, who has been all over Scooter this jam. Gagan wearing the pivot stripe in the white for the Chicago Outfit Syndicate. Right back again, up on top of her. And as the pack gets spread out, they gotta let her go. No lead right there. That's always a key strategy, trying to lure those blockers out. And if you can do it successfully, you almost get a free pass for your jammer. And a major illegal procedure going. Oh, armband not showing. Molly Hatchet. Wearing satchel on her back today. Margos McNasty going for a hit, but Scooter will get out and around, and that's going to be a grand slam for the Bruce City Bruisers. Patiently working their way back in and taking a little bit of a hit on the inside line to Scooter, but otherwise untouched, and that's a quick grand slam for her. 29-42 in favor of the outfit, but the Bruce City Bruisers surging back. 
Got some slow pack action here. Massive hit, great booty blocking right there from Gagan. And out of the box, getting knocked to the outside, but staying up and in and picking up four points is just Jane Sutherland. Jam will be called off and Scooter will not break the pack, but she will pick up all four points. So a 4-4 jam and a great penalty kill for Chicago Outfit. Margos McNasty racing the roof and smiles on the faces of the ladies in white. Jazz hands from Lola Blow, who's lined up a jam against Zote in this next one. You know, in the last jam, we saw a, a call for an Ill illegal procedure because of the safety equipment not being properly in place. But some great safety equipment is Protect Dent Mouth Guards, the first sci scientifically Thoroughly scientific mouth guard for the Derby player. It's it's increased the ability of these players to communicate on the track the way that it's made, and it's changed our sport. Absolutely, and you see the uh, you know the revolution of roller derby and the evolution of roller derby now. Players like Lola Blow pulling maneuvers like that. She gets out, but she is not lead. She picked up a minor cut. Zote clean through the pack though, and she is your lead jammer for Bruce City. Yeah, you see the evolution of the sport and the evolution of the equipment goes with it. Lots of different companies, you know, kind of tailoring their equipment for roller derby. I see the Adam Gear booth over there. Adam Wheels, official wheels of the WF TDA, now making equipment. They got knee pads, elbow pads, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you're protected. Safety is first, priority number one in roller derby. Now we got Bloody Cupcake on the line, Jamie, and I believe for the first time today. That's right, she's done a great job blocking, especially early on. She was a big presence in those first few jams wearing the pivot stripe. Now she's up against Sweet Mary Payne. I always enjoy seeing blockers jam because they think like a blocker and it allows them sometimes to approach a, a kind of an outside of the box strategy as they're skating through the track. That's right, your best blockers are gonna become jammers and right there, Sweet Mary Payne she can do both, but right there showcasing those jammer talents, picking up lead for the Chicago outfit. Both jammers now on their scoring run. That's right, Bloody Cupcake out on her initial pass. Sweet Mary Payne knocked down two. Oh, Heidi Voltage and Carrie Hacksaw both knocked down to the outside. A couple offensive knockdowns for Chicago Outfit Pack, and that's one way to help your jammer pick up four points like Sweet Mary Payne did right there is knock the player down. I mean, if you can hem them in and get them out of the way, that's great, but if you can just blast them off the track, that's pretty effective too. Chicago's been very effective at, at controlling the jam, picking up those points and calling off the jam. The nickel and dime strategy, as it's called, we've seen a lot of teams at this level use it effectively, and Chicago is one of those today. They've taken a page out of those playbooks, and they're, they're using it effectively. Well, Sweet Mary Payne is very good at the nickel and dime strategy. Right now, they're going to send another very smart jammer out to the line. Queefer Sutherland, one of the vets for the Chicago outfit, is going up against, for the first time on the line, Striker. Striker for the Bruce City Bruisers. Sutherland picks up lead jammer and is out, but good burst of speed right there to break free of the pack. Pack's moving pretty fast right now, but it doesn't matter. She's able to break through on the inside of turn three and calls off the jam, picks up four more points. That's right, little jam wins are jam wins and they do tend to pile up right there. You know, speeding it up is what you want to do when you've got a jammer out there like Queefer Sutherland because she is a speed jammer. She's very agile, but she, she's best at moving quickly side to side and adjusting while she's skating fast. So if you can get that pack a little bit spread out, she doesn't need a whole lot of room to get through. She just needs some feet, some uh, speed in her feet, pardon me. Zote uh, now for the Bruce City Bruisers going up against Lola Blow for Chicago. Lola Blow rolls off a backwards block and a couple Bruce City skaters go down and that will free 138 for the Chicago Outfit lead jammer again for the syndicate. Meanwhile, Zote stuck in the back of the pack here looking for some teamwork. Seeing some good teamwork from Chicago Outfit. Bloody L with a nice individual effort. You see her in the white helmet with the green. She gets cleared out. Nice block right there for M. Fatale and the Bruce City Bruisers. Help get her jammer out. But again, they're focusing on the jammer. And that means a grand slam for Lola Blow is a little bit easier accomplished because everybody is focusing on the black and gold star. Lola Blow now looking to pick up some more points here. Goes through the inside of turns three and four. Zote getting some room right there. 
Heads to the inside, got one of her skaters there and gets around her, she's out of the pack. And Lola Blow, shaking her head a little bit right there, says, nope, not getting through this time. Not gonna waste the energy, I'm gonna call it off because I already picked up four points. And the Chicago Outfit will add another four fingers to their scoreboard. Right now, 33, Bruce City Bruisers. Chicago Outfit 63 with 6.03 left in the first half. That's some fresh faces we see on the bench there. Dr. Hauschka celebrates the fresh faces of the WFTDA. Stop by their uh, website. Check them out, drhauschka.com, and get your fresh face. Number M80, Sweet Mary Payne in the white jersey for Chicago Outfit. Going head to head with Carrie A. Hacksaw for the Bruce City Bluser, Bruisers in the black jerseys. Easy for us to say. <laughs> you can see the Chicago fans there getting riled up. Chicago now with a 30 point lead. See, longtime skater for the outfit, sometimes bench coach Althea and Hell out there cheering loudly for her team. The Bruce City fans, not to be outdone, have their own cheering section. And the Vuvuzela as well. All right, here we go. Off the jammer line, Sweet Mary Payne first into the pack, but getting some room on the outside. Carrie a hacksaw, Sweet Mary Payne will sneak through on the inside. Great job by wearing satchel on her jersey. That's Molly Hatchet holding back that opposing jammer. She has done a bang up job on defense all weekend. One of those understated heroes for the Chicago outfit. Sweet Mary Payne out working her way around. Hacksaw with some great speed trying to catch up. Molly Hatchet headed to the box and it is a two on two right now as they're getting Heidi Voltage back are the Bruce City Bruisers, but they're just keeping that speed up, trying to kill the lead. And Sweet Mary Payne says, fine, you can have that one. Zero, zero jam does work in their favor as we are closing in on five minutes left in the first half. 30 point lead for the outfit, 63, 33. You know, this broadcast that you're watching on WFTDA.com, it's made possible by Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful video processing solutions. They're making this awesome broadcast happen, and we thank them. Absolutely happy to bring these games to everybody out there in Derbyland. You know there's got to be friends and family in Chicago. Of course, there's people out in Milwaukee. I know there's at least one person in Austria watching this game right now. Gloria Hole has got to be ex-announcer for the Bruce City Bruisers and announcer for the Chicago outfit as we get this slow start rolling. Got to give a shout out to a lot of people back home in all these states who are watching, having watch parties. No Traverse City Toxic Cherries have been watching a lot this weekend, and it's important for smaller teams, newer teams in this region to watch these games and see the great level of strategy that's happening right there. No pass, no penalty. Queefer Sutherland out first and got around a down skater after she got knocked out, so no lead jammer for her. That still leaves it open for the Bruce City Bruisers. If you'd like to talk to us, you can tweet us. Make sure you use the hashtag talk to WFTDA. That's talk number two WFTDA. We want to hear from you. That's right. Muggles McNasty headed to the box. Major penalty for high blocking. That means outfit's going to be down to two, but just for a second, they will get one back and a five-point pass for Queefer Sutherland will end it as the Bruisers get lead jammer and call it off. So a grand slam right there for the outfit. Five more points, 68. Chicago outfit, 33. Bruce City Bruisers. We'd like to thank Vanilla Skates. Let Vanilla Derby take you to success with our Renegade and Straight Jacket boots. That's Vanilla Skates. Check them out online. And you can always equip those Vanilla Skates with something from Green Monster. They make great toe stops. They make wheels as well heartless wheels and of course they make boots too antic boots check out green monster speaking of monsters monster on the track right there sweet mary Payne, another lead jam for chicago outfit she is just a gale force of nature out there for the ladies in white and black great speed by zote though getting low it's speed skater stance trying to catch up to sweet mary Payne. And Sweet Mary Payne, seeing all white directly in front of her, is going to call it off because that was a little too tantalizing for Zote being able to strike first if she hit that pack. You know, a lot of fans probably seeing Chicago, the Chicago outfit for the first time this weekend. And uh, I have to say, they, they're going to remember the name of Sweet Mary Payne. Doing an excellent job this weekend. That's right. 
Her first tournament out was with the Chicago Outfit back at Fall Brawl 2. She was the MVP for that tournament, and they went on to victory. A few years back, though, that was back in 2008. Molly Hatchett now on the line for the Chicago Outfit. Carry a hacksaw on the line for the Bruisers. Hatchet versus Hacksaw, here we go. Somebody's gonna get cut. Thick pack right there, trying to cut through it first as Molly Hatchet going to the inside, but the Bruisers pack just collapses on her. Good defense right there from Bruce City, and it's ending up a two-person wall. They're working essentially one-on-one -on -one with a backup. Carrie Hacksaw getting out to the front, gets hit by Margles McNasty. She's got one to beat, she does, and Lee Jammer goes to Bruce City. Hacksaw able to cut her way through the pack. She had to earn that one. There was some great defense, some great pack strategy. Absolutely, she did have to earn it. Molly Hatchett out of there on her initial pass. Pack being spread out right now. Bruce City falling back. No pack called right there, and they've just got to let that blocker go through. She will get knocked to the inside, and that's going to be a major penalty for out of play, but a pack destruction major penalty as well going to Bruce City. So matching penalties to end in a 4-0 jam for the Bruisers, trying to get some more points on the board. Chicago Outfit was starting to walk away with it a little bit, but a whole lot of time left on the board in this game. Not much left in this half, though. We get one more jam in right now. Chicago Outfit in the white and black, 68. Bruce City Bruisers in the black and athletic gold, 37. Athletic gold, that's a good way to describe what we're seeing because anyone wearing gold out here is an athlete for sure. Yep, and it's also an industry term. Look, you learn stuff in Derby. <laughs> Knocked to the outside and having to come back in is the jammer for Bruce City. Meanwhile, out in front, Queefer Sutherland gets bumped back. Nice defense from number 68. That is Moby Nips. Moby Nips relatively silent today. She had a big game against Detroit yesterday. Very good job on defense. Even had some points jamming. Gagan out there trying to help break her jammer pass. Serve and justice, but she cannot. And that's gonna be a pass on the inside. Not lead jammer though for Bruce City. No pass, no penalty called. And that means Zote is not lead. No lead jammer for Queen for Sutherland either. So we're gonna go two minutes. Of course, period clock might end and it has, but we will go until the end of the jam. We've got about a minute left in this jam. Should it end by time? Four points on the board for Queen for Sutherland. Right now, Zote patiently, oh, Gagan getting hit, and then her coming across, hit Zote and took her out. Just Jan to the outside of the front straightaway. Now to the inside in turn one and two. Betty Clobber in the box for Bruce City right there. Two skaters on the track for the Bruisers, all four blockers out there for Chicago Outfit. And Queefer Sutherland has one to contend with and some strong play out in front before she hits that 20 foot mark and they gotta let her go. Grand slam right there for Queefer Sutherland. Chicago doing an excellent job with the grand slams today. Nice maneuver there, stands up, gets low and gets outside. Great recovery from Moby Nips to get out and throw the hit, but she did pick up all five points. Five point grand slam right there for Queefer Sutherland and four points more on the board for Bruce City as we end the first half. 82, Chicago Outfit 41, Bruce City Bruisers. We're gonna take a 15 minute timeout. Well, halftime, I guess. I think it's a long timeout. You know, it's just <laughs> built into the game as a timeout. Uh, so we're gonna take 15 minutes, let these teams talk some strategies, see what they, you know, figure out what they saw in the first half, kind of readjust here. A lot of strategy in this game and a 41 point difference. Bruce City Bruisers have a lot to talk about. Not to say Outfit doesn't have a lot to talk about too. They have seen some very good things working out for their team. They wanna make sure they keep working with that and not get a lot of penalties because that is one thing that has killed this team historically so far playing a very clean game though. And we're back, Mello Joe here alongside AK 40 Ounce. And we are at Coming out of halftime, Bruce City Bruisers 41, the Chicago Outfit 82. AK, we've got some tweets to share with the Derby world. Cleaver says, sweet Mary Payne for weekend MVP. She's put in her two cents on who she thinks should be the MVP. The MVP uh, in, well, excuse me, 
It's just so exciting. Union Vacations is proud to provide the 2011 WFTDA MVP with a one-week getaway to Mexico, and uh, they'll be selected uh, one MVP for each weekend, and they get uh, a separate prize pack from the one coming up in Denver. That's the one that we just mentioned with the getaway to Mexico. Uh, Cleaver says Sweet Mary Payne should be a contender for it. I, I have to say I'm inclined to agree. I, I think that's a great assessment from Cleaver on Twitter. Also, a shout-out from Euro Derby, WFTDA Europe, is watching the North Central Tournament. Glad to have you with us across the pond. It's great to hear from you guys That's overseas. right. That's and if great. you want to talk to us, you can hashtag talk the number two WFTDA. We are getting your tweets. Let us know if there's something that you need to know or there's something you want to say. Please give us your feedback watching on WFTDA.com all around the world. And the winner of this bout We'll go on to face the winner of Arch Rival in Cincinnati, the next bout coming up at 5.30 Eastern. So make sure you stick around here on WFTDA.com as the coverage from Monumental Mayhem continues. And that coverage brought to you in part by Green Monster Roller Sports, Fast Girl Skates, Five Stride Skate Shop, Sun King Beer, Derby Supply, Flat Track Revolution, Derby For All, and Nuvo as well as a bunch of our other great sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors for helping us bring WFTDA Roller Derby action, not only to the people here at the Indianapolis Convention Center for the 2011 North Central Region playoffs at Monumental Mayhem, but also on WFTDA.com to those watching and listening all across the globe. Yeah, speaking of, of our broadcast on WFTDA.com, Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful video processing solutions, they're helping make this awesome video possible. You can upgrade to the high-quality feed for an even better picture. That's right, and you can get a great picture of Sweet Mary Payne jamming right now for the Chicago Outfit Syndicate, wearing the white and black, and she is up against Carrie A. Hacksaw, picking up lead jammer right there. Nice job working the inside line, number 24 in the black and gold for the Bruce City Bruisers out of Milwaukee. Hacksaw having a great day so far. So is Sweet Mary Payne. This is a, a wonderful jammer matchup here. That's right, Hacksaw coming in fast, picks up two points, one on the floor and one not on the floor. And she runs into Gagan and he gets knocked out. All smiles from the Bruce City Bruiser crew right there, rolling off the track, getting ready for another jam. And this time it's gonna be Scooter for the Bruce City Bruisers. And she is up against the jammer number 24 for the Chicago outfit wearing just Jane on her jersey. Cleaver Sutherland, pardon me, that's uh, Joni Goodtime, Joan Ranger number 14. First time jamming for Joan Ranger in this game. Kind of expecting one of those, uh, you know, expecting Cleaver Sutherland to come in after Sweet Mary Payne. That has kind of been the rotation for the Chicago outfit. They've gone to Lola Blow a few times as well. Switching it up here right now with a 82-43 lead. Slow start right now, and the Bruce City Bruiser is going to take a knee and spread that one out. And that's going to be Jammers off the line. Joan Ranger way out in front first, and she will pick up Lee Jammer for the Chicago outfit. Here comes Scooter, though, breaking free of the pack as well on her initial pass. They will both score when they hit the next pass. Every opponent they pass by the hips is a point two right there, and she hits hard. Wow, big hit right there we'll as Joan Ranger goes down. She picks up two points, though, for the Chicago outfit. Two points. I couldn't quite tell from our vantage point how many she passed. The, the referee says it's two, and we'll go with that. Chicago outfit now at 84, Bruce City Bruisers 43. We are about two minutes in to the second period. Number 78, Rejected Soul on the line for the Bruce City Bruisers for the first time today. She's going up against Sweet Mary Payne. Outfit captain, Sweet Mary Payne, bobbing and weaving her way back there, trying to fight through, looking for a teammate to grab onto her jersey, but on the inside line, Rejected Soul gets out first. She will not pass her own skater. She gets tripped up on her own blocker right there, and Sweet Mary Payne out first with Lee Jammer for the Chicago outfit. They were skate to skate for just a moment, but a whip would have been a little better. Lady K. Forcing Rejected Soul out on the inside and picking up the minor penalty is the jammer for Bruce City on Gagan right there with two blockers to beat. 
Going up against Lady K out front. Lady K, nice check right there. And she will take down Rejected Soul. And Lady K, it looks like it was a little bit low on the leg, so she's gonna go to the box. Major penalty right now, and the outfit down to one blocker on the track. And that is Gagan, number 422, out there with Sweet Mary Payne. Sweet Mary Payne on the no package is gonna call it off right there. No points for the Chicago outfit. No, or I'm sorry, four points for the Chicago outfit. Out of play right there? Because they will pick up points for out of play skaters. A little bit different in a no pack, but four points was signaled by the referees. And the Chicago outfit will go 88, Bruce City Bruisers, 43. 26, 12 left on the clock in this game. And we're going to start this one out 2-2 in the pack. Molly Hatchett on the line for the Chicago outfit. Scooter jamming for the Bruce City Bruisers. This jam has started. Slow start right there, and that allows Zote to get out of the box and jump right in and start blocking. Out of play major going to a Bruce City Bruiser, but that did help get their jammer out in front. Lead goes to Scooter for the Bruce City Bruisers. Meanwhile, Hatchet makes her way through the pack. Oh, but she picked up a track cut major. She's going to the penalty box. That's gonna leave Scooter in a power jam. Scooter now on the inside of the back straightaway. She picked up four points, make it five. It's a grand slam. That's right, Serving Justice did a good job to draw that penalty earlier on Hatchet, but she is going to the box right now for pack destruction. Cannot destroy the pack. It's always a major penalty. So the Bruce City Bruisers now down to two blockers. Zote out there as well as um, Betty Clobber, number 425. Scooter now at the back of the pack. Jukes to the outside. Lady K, though, right in her way. Scooter now to the outside of turn four. Back to the inside, to the outside again. She's zigzagging all over the track, trying to make her way through this pack. But so far, we've seen some great blocking from Chicago here. That's right, she dodged a hit from Lady K, but Smashly Destructo, the pivot. And I tell you what, Smashly Destructo was not on the roster the last time these two teams played. And it was definitely felt by the Chicago Outfit defense. Bruce City Bruisers are doing a much better job of putting points on the board last time they played. That was just 9-10. That was last month when the Bruce City Bruisers beat the Chicago Outfit 133 to 50, or 133 to 80, a 53 point win for the Bruce City Bruisers. Right now down by 36 points, 88 for the Chicago Outfit in the white. Bruce City Bruisers 52 points in the black and gold. Carry a hacksaw jamming for the Bruce City Bruisers. Trying to make her way through the pack. Full contingent of blockers for the Chicago Outfit right now. Their jammer. Molly Hatchet out of the box and into the back of the pack, but lead jammer right now going to carry a hacksaw. Might as well call her carry a linchpin because she has just been the crux of their jamming rotation all weekend long. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. She's done an excellent job today and throughout the weekend. And right, right there, an excellent job by Gagan throwing her booty into her, forcing her into the infield on the turn and she'll call it off with only two points on the board for the Bruce City Bruisers. No points, though, for the Chicago outfit. You know, we've seen Gagan on the jammer line this weekend, but she hasn't jammed in this bout so far. Uh, if they do feel like they need to switch up their strategy, they've, they've got depth in their roster to change up that jammer rotation. That's right. Strategy working pretty well so far with a 34-point lead. Still 22 and 45 left on the clock for the second half. And Sweet Mary Payne. Talk about linchpins of the jammer rotation. Sweet Mary Payne right there, picking up lead jammer again. She has been dominant in that category in this contest. Meanwhile, at the beginning of the jam, Queefer Sutherland picking up her intentional fourth minor to serve that as a blocker instead of as a jammer, so not to give up the power jam. Lady K, nice offensive block right there, and a quick call off. Lady K and Smashly Destructo both jumping on a Bruce City blocker and opening up a hole for Sweet Mary Payne to just fly through, pick up four points, and say, let's do it again in 30 seconds. Joan Ranger now gonna be jamming for the Chicago outfit. I believe this is her second jam. That's right. Second time in this second half. Did not jam in the first half. Scooter, her 
Bruce City Bruiser's counterpart, no stranger to the jammer line so far. And this jam is underway. Bruce City now taking a knee, getting rid of the pack, and the jammers are off. Oh, and a big pile up right there. Whole lot of skaters going down, and Bloody L is going to be called for the major low block. Did not fall small and took down a Bruce City Bruiser out first to Scooter, lead jammer Bruce City. Joan Ranger, great speed around the track right there, keeping pace with Scooter and forcing her to call it off before they even get close to the pack. 0 0 jam. Advantage, nobody. Another wash, you know, Bruce City Bruisers could use that to slow the momentum here. Now if they could just pick up a few power jams, they could be back in this thing. There's still more than 20 minutes left in the second period. Bruce City Bruisers sitting at 54, Chicago Outfit at 92. In the playoff season, we've seen leads like this erased in the second period. So don't count the Bruisers out yet. That's right, they need some insurance points. And for great insurance, check out Erie Insurance. Give me covered with seriously good insurance. Back to the action on the track, though. Nice move right there by Carrie Hacksaw, but she gets bumped to the outside on the straightaway. She will go down, recover quickly, but Gagan right there in front of her, trying to stay on top of her. Lady K throwing a check into her, and she will get her hips passed, and lead jammer will go to the Bruce City Bruisers. A lot of grit from Carrie A. Hacksaw, fighting it out and picking up lead. Uncharacteristically, Sweet Mary Payne out as well without lead jammer. She's been incredibly effective at gaining that lead jammer status today, but this time it's a no-go. Hacksaw, one foot gliding through, finishing up her pass, four points on the board, no points for the Chicago outfit. You know, we're seeing the skaters skate on a skate court roller derby flat track, and these, these tournaments, the playoffs this year, we're using this at all the events, and it kind of levels the playing field. You know, these skaters skate on polished concrete and sometimes hardwood floors, but this makes it a nice level playing field for everyone, and this is how you can take your lead to the next level with a skate court roller derby flat track. That's right, all right. We've got Zote jamming for Bruce City, getting out and around her blockers on the slow start right there. No pack called, and they've got to let her go. Pack will reform, and Susie Crotra just out of play. Has to let her go. Lead jammer Zote, Bruce City Bruisers, going on a little bit of a roll right now with lead jammer status as Queefer Sutherland finishes her initial pack and is out as well for the Chicago outfit. Quickly makes her way through the pack and calls off the jam. Another four points. Now the Bruce City Bruisers are doing the nickel and dime strategy, controlling the jam, picking up the points, and calling off the jam. Rinse, lather, repeat, and that's how you win some roller derby textbook style. That's right. When you're done rinsing, leathering, and repeating, make sure you check out Dr. Hauschka. Check out their website, or if you happen to come by this weekend, check out the booth. They have amazing bruise healing, and as well as skin care products. Big thanks to Dr. Hauschka, proud sponsor of the WFTDA Big Five. And we've got a timeout. We'd like to take this time to thank Splendland Media. They've got outside the lines a new kind of t-shirt also, Splendland Media, the makers of the WFTDA rules app for the iPhone. You can check that out as well if you're a new fan or even an experienced one. There's a lot of rules to learn out there, so you can make it a lot easier by having that with you wherever you go with the Splendland Media rules app available on the iPhone. That's right. And tell you what, I got smacked by Roller Girl Skates today. Check out rollergirlskates.com. Head on over there. Great skates and equipment for all your roller derby needs. Rollergirlskates.com. And it looks like we're about to get back underway here. It's going to be Joan Ranger back on the line for the Chicago outfit. Versus Stryker for the Bruce City Bruisers. Number 14 versus number 14. First time out there. For Stryker. In this half, Joan Ranger getting a heavy jammer rotation right now for the Chicago outfit. Lola Blow, number 138, back behind the jammers, looking to pick up her fourth minor for a legal procedure. She'll get it from the outside ref, and they will get her into the box so she can clear a penalty slate. Joan Ranger getting hit. Nice stand-up hip check right there. And she will fight her way around and pick up lead jammer for the Chicago outfit syndicate. Strike her 
getting some room on the outside and she will finish her initial pass as well. Joan Ranger coming in hot but slowing down seeing that wall of black up front. Rejected Soul on top of Joan Ranger and she will call it off right there. See if she'll get around. She did not, but she did pick up one point right there for the Chicago outfit. No points for the Brew City Bruisers. And the Bruisers getting on a little bit of a streak right there before that extended time was taken in between jams. And before that jam started. So it looks like a little bit of the momentum might have been taken away. They're going to send Carrie Hacksaw to keep that momentum rolling in their favor. Will the Brew City Bruisers right now with 62 points to the outfit's 93 13 and a half left to play in this game. Sweet Mary Payne, though, is the jammer she's going to have to beat. And that, that's going to be a tricky situation, to say the least. Two great jammers going head to head in this next jam. That's right, bringing out the big guns right now, getting into the home stretch. Almost to the last 15 minutes of play, 17 and a half up on the board right now. And we've got an official timeout. You know, talk is cheap, they say. Talk is cheap, take it to the track. You can stop by their website, TICSkateGear.com. You can get all kinds of cool stuff there. All right, looks like everything got figured out right there on the floor. Minor penalty correction, the reason for the official timeout. And a couple skaters go down at the line. As this one starts out, another thick pack right in front of the jammer line. They are really making the jammers work this weekend. Every single team out there seeming to employ some kind of strategy like that. But Harry Hacksaw, like a skill saw through a twig, it just cuts through that pack, picks up lead jammer for the Bruce City Bruisers. Both skaters now on their scoring run. But Bruce City way out in front, now making their way through the pack. Four on two right now in favor of the Bruisers. One left to beat for Hacksaw. It's Margos McNasty. She'll throw a little bit of a check into her, but Hacksaw rolls right around it. Easy breezy. Four points on the board right there. No points for the outfit. Not something you see often. Sweet Mary Payne blanked on that one. Great job by Carrie Hacksaw. And now the Bruisers are going to turn to Zote to keep things rolling. Chipping away at that lead right now. We for Sutherland looking to stop the bleeding for the Chicago outfit. A lot of camaraderie on the track today. The girls chatting and smiling before the jams. You love to see that, that kind of friendly rivalry on the track. That's right, Joe. All right. 28 points of difference right now, 66-94. And the Bruce City Bruisers have the comeback train a rolling. Zote picking up lead jammer right there. And Queefer Sutherland on the ground on the straightaway. Major penalty will go to the pivot for the Bruisers. Romaniak making her way to the box as Queefer Sutherland still held up in the pack. And here comes Zote. Zote in around some skaters focusing on the outside. Picked up a couple points already. One to beat in Lady K. And Lady K will send her into the infield. And Zote will call it off right there. But not before she picks up. A couple points, no points for the Chicago outfit, four points for the Bruce City Bruisers. You know, one thing that always impresses me, and this is going to sound silly to a lot, especially probably some of the Derby girls listening, but the, the track, the boundaries are marked off with a rope that's got tape over it. I don't know if you've ever skated over that, but an average skater, that's going to knock them off balance. But these girls, they just skate right over the top of it like it's nothing. They, they have such incredible balance and, and agility, agility, it's great. Just love to watch it. Absolutely love to watch these two jammers go at it too. Right now it is Scooter fighting her way in front. Margles, a big hit from Margles McNasty. And a penalty whistle so she'll go to the box but thumbs down from Margles McNasty. Nice recovery right there from Scooter. Gets out front, picks up lead jammer for the Bruce City Bruisers. Scooter just scoots around. Perhaps that's where she got her name. Lola Blow forced to the inside and a cut right there. So we've got a power jam right now for the Bruce City Bruisers down by 24. Just tearing away at that lead that the Chicago Outfit had built and a grand slam right there. will take a big chunk out of the point differential. Big Bruce pack City. advantage right now for Bruce City. Bruce City fans are fired up. You can hear them making a lot of noise here in Indy. 
Another five points. It's another grand slam. A lot of hustle out there from Gagan, but Gagan going to the box. Major back block as Molly Hatchett returns to the pack for Bruce City, or uh, pardon me, the Chicago outfit. Bruce City with a full contingent of blockers. Hiroshima and Mal E. Hatchet, the only blockers out there, but with four tough defenders, another five point grand slam. Seems easy for Scooter, who has put a couple up on the board in this jam, and it's a nine point game, and this is not over yet. Wow, wow. held up right there, took an outside lane, and another five point grand slam. The stars have a line, the Bruce City Bruisers have done exactly what they needed to do to get back in this thing. The Bruce City Bruisers now sit at 90, the Chicago outfit 94. 13 minutes remain in the second period and it looks like we've got a team timeout. Chicago's calling the timeout. I'd like to take this time to thank Roller Girl Skates. You can check them out online, rollergirlskates.com. Also, you can take your league to the next level with Skate Court Roller Derby Flat Tracks. Jules Axel Adams Doyle, he's got a new book. It's called No Mercy. Have you seen it? I have, and it's, it is amazing. There's some great photographs in there. It's incredible. You need to pick that up today. Just some incredible photography from Jules Axel Adams Doyle. You know, Jules has been doing great photography, photography for Derby for a long time. Uh, and I got to say, speaking for myself, one of the best pictures I've ever had taken was at a roller derby game. I was doing something and he caught me in a moment. And I saw that later on Flickr and I was like, wow, man, this guy does great work. Yeah, if, if you're a fan of the roller derby community, been to any roller derby community websites, you've seen his photography. And now you can own it, have it on your coffee table, show it off to your friends. It's great stuff. That's right. Great for getting autographs, too. And a couple autographs I wouldn't mind having in my collection right now on the jammer line. Sweet Mary Payne, Carrie A. Hacksaw. And it was a big jam for Hack earlier against Sweet Mary Payne and blank in her that started this comeback after a 20 point jam right now. Chicago outfit starting to feel the pressure, only up by four points and Sweet Mary Payne is working hard to get out of there, but Moby Nips with the pivot stripe is just all over. You know, we said earlier that that lead was not too big to be erased and we've seen it happen first inch by inch, but then a big push by the Bruce City Bruisers they're back in this thing, but right now it's Chicago with the lead jam. Sweet Mary Payne looks to make her way through the pack once again on the inside. Nice job coming in through a little bit of a hip check on that opposing jammer. She gets up to the front. Moby Nips takes her down, but a major forearm will mean the Bruce City Bruisers are down to one blocker. They'll get one back. It's going to be Moby Nips. She's on delay for the box because there's two in there right now, and she will be sent back off again. Wow, Bruce City Bruisers getting into a tough spot right now. Sweet Mary Payne, nice maneuver right there. Again, around Kerry A. Hacksaw, taken to the outside. Nice defense from Soul. And rejected Soul, gonna get a major on that one. So the Bruce City Bruisers facing a lot of penalty trouble and in some serious, serious holes right now. Oh, Hacksaw taken down into the turn and Sweet Mary Payne putting five points on the board. We're gonna talk about momentum shifting. This jam right now with Sweet Mary Payne lapping the jammer again is definitely putting it back in favor of the outfit. You know, as quickly as it seemed like the Derby gods were shining down on the Bruce City Bruisers, now they've shifted their focus to the Chicago outfit. Complete momentum shift here. That's right, tough defense. Kerry Hacksaw going down onto the infield again and another blocker headed off to the box. Moby Nips going to the box to join Rejected Soul. So we will start this one out, this next jam, unless we have any late fourth minors. Four on two in favor of the outfit and a big jam for Sweet Mary Payne. Looks like Lola Blow is going to be on the line for the Chicago outfit. And Zote is taking the line for the Brew City Bruisers. Outfit with four on the floor right now. Looks like Hiroshima out there with Molly Hatchet, Margles McNasty, and their pivot, Hell's a waiting. Both jammers jumping off, and Zote, great inside job right there. Nice formation by those two Bruce City blockers. 
help their jammer get through. A couple great blockers out there with a great head for Derby. Frank Herter out there supporting, serving justice. Defensive powerhouse for Bruce City. No pack being called, so they're going to have to let that jammer just slide on through. But here comes Lola Blow taking the inside, and she will get out in front of Zote. Both will score four points. Zote calls it off there. As Hiroshima right at the end called to the box, so the outfit will lose one of their blockers. Bruce City Bruisers still down two, so a 3-2 pack advantage to start this next one. Looks like we're going to see Queefer Sutherland up against Scooter. But in the meantime, Joe. Yeah, speaking of the Brew City Bruisers, if you've got a bruise of your own, Dr. Hauschka is the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid. Here we go, another quick start from the Chicago outfit. They've been doing that all game, and right here, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. <laughs> Queefer Sutherland right there picking up lead jammer for the Chicago Outfit Syndicate. And the Syndicate has put back a nice retaliation push, push after the Bruce City Bruisers came back to within four. Right now, Outfit 113, Bruce City Bruisers 94. No points either side for that one. Advantage goes to the outfit because with under 10 minutes left in this game, looking at 8.48 on the clock right now, and 19 points in favor of the Chicago outfit. Not the lead they once had, but they'll take it and hopefully try and get that lead a little bit bigger. Sweet Mary Payne was going to jam, but it looks like they're going to substitute in last second Lola Blow. Number 138 in the white for the Chicago outfit up against Carrie A. Hacksaw. Number 24 in the black and gold for the Bruce City Bruisers. Lola Blow looking to, you know, eating this time off the clock here. It's not, not going to hurt Chicago as bad as it's going to hurt Bruce City. Bruce City got to get their points in before time runs out. That's right, and if anybody can do it, it's Carrie Hacksaw right there taking a hit from Molly Hatchett, and they got to let her go out front. Joan Ranger cannot engage. She was out of the engagement zone. Lead jammer goes to Carrie Hacksaw. Lola Blow trying to work her way out as well, but Frank Herter and Servant Justice have been a monstrous pair of defensive blockers. If you want to put a two-all together, look to those two right there. One-on-one, -on -one, no match for Lola Blow. Tiny, speedy jammer getting around Servant Justice. Demonstrates how to do it. Quickly made her way through. Looks like Gagan headed off to the box as that one gets called. Carrie A. Hacksaw puts three points up on the board. No points for the outfit. Keeping it close. 113. Chicago outfit 97. We'd like, to thank, we'd like to thank our tournament partner, Flat Track Revolution. We'd also like to thank PDACoolStuff.com. We make stuff that's cool, and that's how we roll. You know, speaking of rolling, Sin City Skates are the official Big Five skate techs. They, they've they been fixing the gear of all the ladies anytime we've had any equipment malfunctions, uh, you know, the, the occasional toe stop that pops off or e even a stuck wheel at Easterns. You never know what you're going to see on the track, and it's great that we've got Sin City Skates here in the house to help these girls with their skates. That's right. You can check them out, Sin, SinCitySkates.com, W-G-A-F. Kui for Sutherland lined up for the Chicago outfit in the white and black up against Zote in the black and gold for the Bruce City Bruisers. 113-97, the difference right now in favor of the outfit. And you see all those outfit skaters and fans in the crowd right now sending all of their good vibes to their skaters and maybe a little bad juju going down to the Bruce City Bruisers. The Chicago fans are on their feet. The Bruce City fans are on their feet. Chicago now in, in place for the next jam. Looks like they're going to take a knee, unless they change their mind before then. Brew City skaters looking very focused right there on the bench. Skaters on the floor look a little bit more loose. You see the two jammers back there chatting it up, and the uh, blockers in the front already on their knee waiting for this one to get the quick start going. Looks like it's going to be Bloody L out there with Sweet Mary Payne and Gagan doing the blocking for the Chicago outfit. 
for the Bruisers. We've got rejected soul out there. Headed over to the box to talk some strategy with her teammate. Zote and Queefer Sutherland back behind the jammer line. Waiting for their chance to shine right now with 7.27 left on the clock. And I heard a whistle. I think we may be about to get back underway here. These jammers and these blockers ready to go. They've been, been in position patiently waiting and now they're off. All right, looks like Rue City Bruisers asked for a review. Couldn't get any specifics out of it right there. But looks like gave enough time for Queefer Sutherland to plan her strategy and get out. She gets a lead right there. Zote out of the pack as well. Three on three are the blocker matchup, is the blocker matchup. Derby Goodyear as one skater in the box for each team. And as Zote hits the pack, she will pick up no points. Called off just in time by Cleaver Sutherland, who puts three more on the board for the Chicago outfit. Zote holding up that one finger. She felt like she got the point, but the refs have a different perspective than we have here and also the skaters on the track. And uh, I, I do trust their judgment. That's right. They've got the best view of all right there from the center of the track. It's even better than us, and we're right here. Well, we may have the best job in Derby, but Honestly, I tell you, the best view in Derby is probably the penalty trackers in the middle. They get to be in the thick of the action, and generally they don't get yelled at for calls that they make. <laughs> and if you want to be a roller derby official, just contact your local league. With over, uh, you know, I don't know, what, 800 now in the USA? It's growing every day. Yeah, 1,000 you know in the world. October is uh, National Roller Skates Month, too, so uh, it'll be a great month to get started. Absolutely. And if this is your first time watching Roller Derby on WFTDA.com, thank you for joining us. Please feel free to give us feedback. Twitter, hashtag, talk to the number two, WFTDA. Feel free to give us some feedback or mostly just say how awesome this bout has been, 97-113. And a very, very entertaining and uh, surprising Saturday so far. Chicago Outfit upsetting the... Madison Mad Roland Dolls earlier to play in this game. And the Minnesota Roller Girls, number three in the North Central, upsetting Detroit Derby Girls, number two in the last game. They will go on to face the winner of Windy City versus Naptown, which is later tonight. Up next, we have up next we have Arch Rival taking on Cincinnati. All right, official timeout was to fix the clock. Want to make sure we have the correct time up on the board. And it is 6.59 officially. So that, that actually ate a little bit of time off the clock. We were sitting at a little over seven minutes. And that, that could be pivotal in such a close game. And it's great that, the, that our officials are able to keep track of that stuff and, and keep everything uh, perfectly in line so that there's no question that the winner that skates out of here is the true winner. Got to love that. Got Got a lot of respect for these guys in the stripes. That's right. Single whistle puts the pack away, but they weren't going anywhere. They were just down, so the double whistle lets the jammers play. Going for that quick start again. Both jammers working hard right there. Great offensive block, Smashly Destructo. The pivot for the Chicago outfit helps get Lola Blowout and pick up lead jammer. Zote wearing 716. In the black and gold with the star on her helmet going down into the turn right there, taking a couple bumps and a progressive fall as she goes down. Lola Blow in on her scoring pass, gets knocked to the inside. Great block right there from Frankenherder, number 216. Bruisers forming a wall of black up front, trying to keep that pace sped up with Lola Blow in on her scoring pass. Looks like Lola Blow is kind of trapped in a wall of black jerseys there. Lola Blow taking a couple hits right there, calling it off. M. Fatale, nice job blocking, distracting Lola Blow. And three points will go on the board for the Chicago outfit. Bruce City Bruisers will stand at 97. Syndicate with 119 and 549 left in the period with a timeout on the floor. You know, these two teams aren't afraid to get physical, but that's okay because They've got Dr. Hauschka. Dr. Hauschka, the, the WF, WFTDA's official bruise healer, lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid.
Looks not, like, oh, go. I tell you what, something that could be interesting is if if the outfit pulls this one out, gets the upset, they will go on to the fifth place game and they could potentially play arch rival if arch rival beats Cincinnati and that would be a rematch from yesterday and that was a three point game between these two teams and I tell you what over the course of the weekend we might see some different strategies pulled out and it'd be interesting to compare a game tomorrow between those two squads as to what happened on Friday but we'll see we still got 5.52 left on the clock and it looks like we're going to start out with a power jam in favor of the Chicago outfit and it's going to be Queefer Sutherland on the line with the star. Queefer Sutherland now making her way to the back of the pack. She's going to the inside, now to the outside in the back straightaway, uh, now up the center. Trying to make her way around That's num rejected number 78. Soul. Rejected soul. Nice hit from Hacksaw, playing some defense, sending Queefer Sutherland into the infield. She has to recover back behind the entire pack. Can I come in in front of the skater that knocked you out? That's a cut. Couple nice hits in the back as the outfit is trying to hold back number 30, Romaniac, and force 20 feet, but they're unsuccessful in doing so. Great job by the Brew City blockers out front. Keep that pack stretched out and keep their skater in play. Nice job right there. Queefer Sutherland picking up lead jammer on one skate right up against the rope. You know what they like to call that? They call that the fifth blocker right there. <laughs> Big hit, oh man, Queefer Sutherland coming in hot, getting slammed twice. Hacksaw going to the box, as well as rejected Soul, so it's gonna be two on two pack right now. Queefer Sutherland still on a scoring pass, as out of the box for the Bruce City Bruisers, their jammer Zote, I'm sorry, Scooter. Scooter is out of the box and can now score because she just completed her first initial pass. Queefer Sutherland getting the whip around turn four. Tries to get her hip in and around, but she cannot pull it off right there. She did pick up all four points, though, and that is a big jam for Chicago. Raise the roof, the response from the bench. All the Chicago outfit fans back behind their skaters supporting them. They're very excited right now with a 123 to 97 lead, 410 left on the clock, Joe. Bruce City calling a, a timeout here, perhaps to discuss some strategy. They're, they're gonna need a little bit of luck, but also it's still not completely out of reach here. If we can see a power jam, these fourth miners have a way of rearing their ugly head in the last couple jams. So any, any of the skaters out there floating around with three minors, we could see them go to the box for, you know, just a minor. So that could play a big role here in these last few jams as we're winding down. Just over four minutes left. Brew City Bruisers at 97. Chicago Outfit out in front with 123. That's right. Outfit looking for their 10th win on the season. Came into this tournament eight and five overall, six and three in the region, with one loss and one victory so far this weekend, losing to Arch Rival and beating Madison in a big upset. If they can pull this one off, that would be incredibly huge for this team. Their first time in a WFTDA Big Five. They want fifth place bad. Bruce City Bruisers want it too, and they're gonna do their best. They're gonna send Bloody Cupcake out. Great job by her. She takes a hit and keeps on going. Lead jammer, Bruce City Bruisers. Crunch time right now, just under four minutes. Margos McNasty taken down hard by serving justice. Gagan forced to the inside and a major elbow being called on serving justice. So she'll head off. Gagan working her way around the track right now. Gagan first time jamming. I know we brought it up earlier that she can be called upon to jam occasionally. You know, they may be dealing with a penalty situation where they've got skaters with three, or they could just need a rest for some of their more typical jammers. Two points right there for the bruisers before it's all called off. That's going to make it 99-123. Mello Joe, we've got 320 left on the clock right now. What are your thoughts going into this home stretch? I think what the Brew City Bruisers need, they desperately need a power jam. And what, what they can do to get that is they can use their blockers to try and draw a, uh, maybe a fourth minor or draw a major penalty on, on one of their, their opposing jammers. That's right. It's going to be tough right now with only one blocker out there. And she cannot contain Queefer Sutherland. Lead jammer goes to the Chicago Outfit Syndicate. Time ticking away under three minutes left. And the outfit 
with one skater advantage in the pack right now. Four on three, doing their best to hold back Brew City's jammer. We for Sutherland, patient right there, gets around to knock down Scooter. So she will get the jammer lap point right there. Two wall up front for the Bruisers. Now she's going up the outside of turn three. Little contact there. Romaniac, very emphatic when she gets hit right there. And nice job by the Bruce City Bruisers. They have brought Weaver Sutherland all the way to the back of the pack right now. Nice offensive block on the inside though. Will get her freed and that is going to be a five point grand slam pass right now. Chicago outfit 128, Bruce City Bruisers 99, 157 left on the clock. Another nickel in the bank here. Queefer Sutherland with an incredible jam. She's had a great day, great weekend. Chicago looking like a really strong team. Both of these teams learning a lot this weekend. Queefer Sutherland now calls off the jam in the front straightaway. One nothing on that pass right there. Queefer Sutherland headed off to the bench looking focused, a little winded right there. And there it goes, the smile and the raise the roof. And the Chicago Outfit fans going crazy behind her. A lot of signs right there. Sweets is our queen being held up right now. Sweet Mary Payne is going to be on the jammer line right here with a minute and five, four, three left on the clock. She's going up against number zero. That's Bloody Cupcake. We're going to see if the Bruce City Bruisers can pull something huge off right here. And they do Bloody Cupcake out with lead jammer right there. Exactly what the Bruce City Bruisers do. Need if they're going to pull this off down by 30 points right now. We've seen a 34 point jam earlier today. And if Bruce City can pull it off, that would be huge. They might be able to get one more jam in if they stop it in time. And both teams do have a timeout left on the scoreboard. Big hit right there. Great job from Helza Waiton coming in, swinging hard on Bloody Cupcake and knocking her down. Sweet Mary Payne does break free on her initial pass, and it looks like Lady K is out of the box. So it will be four blockers on the floor as this one ends. Four points in the bank for the Bruce City Bruisers, and they will break 100 right now. Bruce City calling a timeout, which means that's gonna stop the clock and allow one more jam, even though the period clock will expire. This bout won't expire until the jam is either called off or the jam timer expires. Listen. Well, the, the, the jam, yeah, the jam time, not the jam timer. We would hate to see her expire <laughs> on the track. I think that would be reason to call off the jam, though. <laughs> With bated breath, the Chicago outfit fans, Brew City fans right there waiting. Brew City, there's still a bit of hope in them. It would take a big jam down by 26 points right now. It is possible and they're gonna send Zote to the line to try and pull this one out. She's up against Molly Hatchet for the Chicago outfit. Outfit in white, Bruce City Bruisers in black, and one jam remaining in this game. Zote, out she's gonna get a run and start here, I'm assuming, when the whistle blows. Looking to try and get any kind of advantage. She can't get that momentum as the jam begins. Let's see if it pays off. She uses that space to get a roll going to the inside, and oh, taken down hard is Molly Hatchet into the inside line. Zote looking for some room on the outside, but Gagan right there. Nice job spinning around, trying to hold her back. She cannot, and a major cut, or fourth minor cut being called, and that will send the Brew City jammer to the box. Zote picking up her fourth minor. Really risky to send somebody out with three minors as a jammer right at the end there. Fourth minor. Molly Hatchet ugly head. was lead jammer, and she calls it Chicago Outfit Syndicate. Their first time ever at a WFTDA Big Five. Will be moving on and play for fifth place. Coming in at nine. Could be the biggest upset story of the weekend, and the syndicate are all smiles over there. Pile of white jerseys as they are getting in for the hugs. Final score, 129-103. Chicago Outfit has taken down the Bruce City Bruisers, and not even a month ago, they lost by 53 points to this team. It's an incredible turnaround. Chicago, you talked about earlier, they're really great at studying tape. 
And, and you can tell they knew their opponent coming into this one. Uh, make no bones about it, Chicago knew what they were getting into, and they practiced to fit their opponent today. Brew City Bruisers, 103, but a valiant effort from the Brew City Bruisers. No, no slouch of their own. Uh, certainly a close bout, few lead changes, very exciting. Got to love this kind of roller derby. Yep, got as far as 45, got as close as four in the second half, but 26 points, the difference at the end, and the Chicago outfit will play the winner of this next game, arch rival in Cincinnati for fifth place in the North Central region. Tons of smiles over there, and just ecstatic are the fans and the support staff from the Chicago outfit. But again, as you said, Bruce City Bruisers, great performance. A couple just stellar performances from individual skaters and some great pack play from that team. They should hang their head high.